Welcome to OSM, Operation Safe Mode, Peace Be With You, Rerun Tuesday. We've come to our final episode on Our Father, Teach Us to Pray. In this part of the episode, we examine what it really means to stay on the narrow path. Remember, when Jesus was called out into the desert, he was led into temptation in order to purify his resolve. Let us see how we realize when we try to follow Jesus in the purification of our lives, Satan will always show up. So stay tuned after this brief message from our sponsor for episode five, The Narrow Path. Just a quick review where we've come so far in this five-part series. What we're trying to do is look at the Our Father and uncover it as it is nurtured by the sacraments. Being able to call God our Heavenly Father is to call to mind that we are made in His image and likeness, which is restored in baptism. The true mission of our desire to be able to hallow His name is to do His will on earth as it is in heaven. In essence, what is our vocation? Is it living out a single life or one of the two sacraments of matrimony or holy orders? The third part is the sustaining grace that is necessary that comes in daily bread through the thanksgiving of what we have to what we desire and always to be nurtured truly in the bread of life, Christ himself. For when we come like him in this sacrament of Holy Eucharist, then we truly can call God our Father. Reconciliation is so important in our lives so that we understand that forgiving is about being forgiven. Now we come to our final part, the fifth part of the Our Father, and I call it the narrow path. This mission, these vocations, even sustained with forgiveness in the bread of life, is a narrow path. It is always a call to conversion. Remember, conversion is a painful realignment so that that narrow path leads to that eternal kingdom. That the narrow path is what we desire heaven to be for us as we take each step in the direction of God's love. And we can only imagine that if we desire this, and the path is narrow, will not Satan show up? Will not Satan try to make us sin? In our last series on sin, we look at the ways that Satan tries to trick us into the reality of our own human weakness, and to fail to remember the next step is always in the direction of mercy and the eternal kingdom. So here plays two very important roles. The first part of this prayer is, lead us not into temptation. Now recently, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, was thinking of changing the language or the wording of this part of the prayer in English. He said that God doesn't lead us into temptation, that it should be changed to lead us away from temptation. I don't always want to, nor would ever want to disagree with the Holy Father. But the prayer is perfect the way it is stated. Lead us not into temptation. The Holy Father says only Satan leads us into temptation. But that is not true in the story of Job. Satan comes to God and says, Give me Job, your perfect servant. Let me tempt him. Let me take away the things you've given him and watch. He'll curse you and die. And God allows, in the story of Job, for Satan to tempt him. God led Job into the temptation of the devil, trusting that he would persevere. Well, we know in the story, Job really struggles with this. He desires to be faithful to God, but it seems to be overwhelming 
And finally, he came to the realization that it is only in God he trusts. Jesus is led out into the desert to be tempted. It says in sacred scriptures, the Spirit leads Jesus out into the desert. So when we pray, lead us not into temptation, what we're really saying is, hey, I'm not Job, and I'm certainly not you, Lord. Don't lead us into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. How can we rephrase that? My mom always said to me that every occasion of sin, every temptation, is also an occasion of love. If we don't see the evil for which we can choose, then how can we choose so freely and so lovingly the good that is God? If we're never tempted, then how is free will even a part of the reality of our lives? But what God will never do to us, as he supported and tempted to Job, God will never lead us into any circumstance for which Satan is present without empowering us to overcome. This is the sacrament of confirmation. When we think of confirmation, when I think of those 90 students who have just been confirmed, I think of those gifts of the Holy Spirit and how they will be led into many temptation situations, choices to do good or evil, that they can have the courage and the wisdom to fend it off, that they can have the knowledge and understanding to be redirected on a narrow path that they will take time to know the awe and wonder through prayer and worship to stay close to the Lord, that they will always remember that right judgment is the step in the way of the kingdom of God. So when you pray this part of the prayer, lead us not into temptation, Lord. Allow each of these circumstances to be a free choice through the Holy Spirit to do the will of the Father, so that the kingdom of God in heaven will be seen here, his will, and hallowed be his name. The final part of the prayer, if you're not going to lead us in temptation, deliver us from evil. See how it comes together? We're not saying don't let us be tempted, but the temptation so that we delivered from evil. Deliver us from evil. I always think of when does Satan really want to get a hold of us? When he is most afraid that not only are we on that path, but we're reaching for the gate of heaven. So the sacrament of anointing of the sick is the sacrament that's always trying to preserve us in our humanness to use our mind and our hands to continue to do the work of God. That's why we use the sacrament now in the church today to strengthen us when we feel overwhelmed with fear of our brokenness, not just the need of forgiveness of sin and reconciliation, not just the need of being nurtured in the Eucharist, but to be made whole again. That's when evil really wants to take us down. So what we want to do here is realize that the last rites, as we call them, the opportunity to be <clears throat> receive the sacrament of anointing with reconciliation and Holy Eucharist will deliver us from evil. So my brothers and sisters, this is the greatest of all prayers, for Jesus teaches us to share in a relationship with the Father, guided by his love, his forgiveness, and his life so that we may enter into the kingdom of God. Not someday after our death, but now on earth, as we do his will, making his name holy for all to hear and for all to see. So be not afraid. Jesus, we trust in you. I hope you enjoyed our five-part series on the Our Father, Teach Us How to Pray. I hope you took some really good notes 
in your handy dandy notebook for further reference. Remember that what we learned here in the Lenten season should always be applied to the disciplines of Lent. Prayer, certainly, is how we come and to know the Father's will through Jesus' love. Fasting helps us, as we see in this episode, to prepare for the attacks that come from the Satan. So then in our weakness, we call upon the power of God's ability to lead us out of that temptation into his divine grace. And almsgiving is always the way that we further the kingdom through our words and our actions. We become the daily bread. So I hope you enjoyed our first part of Rerun Tuesdays. And next week, we will begin a new episode to share with you in the same fashion. So remember, it's in times like these that saints are forged. So let us all become saints and stay safe in the Lord.